In this Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode, you will learn how to configure your Xamarin applications so they can receive NCS push notifications. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Frédéric Desbiens from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Broadly speaking, there are three steps you should perform in order to get your MCS applications to work with MCS for notifications. First, you need to register your application with the relevant push providers. If you target iOS, this is the Apple Push Notification Service or APNS. If you target Android, this is Google Cloud Messaging or JCM. Second, you have to register the app with MCS as well. Finally, you need to write some code in order to enable your app to receive and handle the notifications. Let's now have a closer look at what each step entails. Step one is registration with a provider. When you send a notification to an iOS or Android device, you are actually using the infrastructure provided by Apple and Google respectively. Consequently, you have to let them know that your application exists and you need to fulfill requirements specific to each provider. In the case of Apple, you need to have an Apple Developer Account or Enterprise Account. You then access the Apple Developer Center in order to enable push notifications in your app's provisioning profile and create a dedicated APNS Digital Certificate. MCS requires the certificate to be embedded in a P12 file not protected by a password or with a blank password if you prefer. You will find detailed instructions on Apple's developer website. Please note, you will need to have an actual iOS device in order to test your application because the iOS simulator cannot receive notifications. Similarly, to send notifications to an Android device, you need a Google Developer Account. You will then access the Google Developer Console to create a project, enable the push notification API on it, and create a server public API access key. There are two key pieces of information you will need later. The project ID, something like 387, etc., etc., which will then be used by your Android mobile applications to register for push notifications on JCM. And secondly, the API key, which is a long alphanumeric string, which will be registered with the MCS mobile backend so that the MCS push notification services can call Google's JCM services using that key to identify itself. The Google Developer site contains detailed instructions. I suggest you have a look at it. At this point, we are done dealing with Apple and Google. I will now show you how to register your app in MCS. MCS registration is done per operating system and per backend. This means you will have to register your Xamarin app twice if you target both iOS and Android. The purpose of this registration is to configure MCS to work with each of the push notification backends involved. To register your app, you must log in to MCS and open the backend of your choice. Access the settings page. App registrations can be found at the bottom of the page. Click on the register a new application link. For iOS, in the register mobile application dialog, select iOS for the platform. Enter a name for the application. In the Application ID field, enter the bundle identifier for the iOS version of your app as it appears in Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio. After that, you will have to specify if the APNS certificate used is a development or a production one. Pick the right type, then click on the Upload P12 Certificate link. Locate the file, then select it and click the Open button. MCS will upload the certificate and validate it. If the certificate passes muster, Click the register button and you're done. Otherwise, you will get an error message. The registration process for Android is fairly similar. Select Android for the platform and specify a name. The application ID must be the same as the package name for the Android manifest.xml file. Leave the send method as HTTP and paste the encoded API key you obtained from the Google Developer Console. Click the register button and you will be good to go. Before closing your browser and going back to your favorite IDE, you should take note of the application key assigned by MCS to your application. You will need to add it to the mcsconfiguration.json file. 
everything is now configured the proper way, we are now ready to write some code. Since I want to keep this episode short, I will explain how to implement things through the sample application delivered with the MCS SDK. Please note that that application relies on the open source push notification plugin for Xamarin, which is available on GitHub as well through the new Get Package Manager. As you can guess, push notifications heavily rely on native OS APIs. However, most of the required code can be shared between platforms. Right now, I will focus on that part. I will describe the platform-specific bits later. The push notification plugin requires that to implement the iPush notification listener interface. The class should be located in the core project when targeting multiple platforms. There is one thing the sample app adds to the class that is not specified by the interface a static attribute named device token, which will hold a device specific token obtained from the push notification provider at registration time. In other words, this is a token obtained from Apple or Google when the device registers with them, not one managed by MCS. Device token is assigned a value inside the unregistered method. Another thing you need to do in your cross-platform code is to register the app with the MCS notification API. In the sample app, this is handled by a specific screen, for which I will now open the view model. In the MCS SDK, all operations regarding notifications are done through a service proxy. This proxy must always be obtained by calling the getService method on a mobile backend object. Here, the mobile backend has been defined as an attribute of the application class, exactly like I did when I showed you how to authenticate in a previous episode. To register for notifications, you simply call register for notifications async and pass the device token to it, as you can see in the register method. Normally, you would do this at application startup. However, the call will succeed only if the user is authenticated. Please take that into account when building your own app. A good place to call register for notifications async will be right after calling successfully the authenticate async or authenticate anonymous async methods of an authorization instance. That is all for the cross-platform code. Let's now turn our attention to Android specifics. To make things work, it is essential to add specific permissions to the app's manifest or to the assembly. The sample app follows the second approach. The permissions have been added to the app's main activity class. The first permission is used during JCM registration and ensures all relevant cloud-to-device messages will be sent exclusively to the app. Another permission enables the app to register for notifications and receive them. Finally, two permissions are helpful in the case of notifications received when the app is in the background. The main activity class is also responsible to initialize the push notifications plugin. This is done through a single line of code. As you can see, initialize is a generic method to which we pass notifications listener, our class platform class which implements the iPush notification listener interface as a parameter. It is necessary to specify your Android sender ID obtained from the Google Developer Console as well. On to iOS now. All the platform specific code must be added to the application delegate class. In this case, it is named app delegate. In the finished launching method, there is a call to the initialize method of the cross push notification object, as it is the case for Android. The app delegate class overrides several methods in order to call relevant methods in the plugin. Those include failed to register for remote notifications, did register user for notification settings, and received remote notification. However, the most important one is registered for remote notifications, which calls unregistered success on the plugin, passing the all important device token as a parameter. In MCS, push notifications are cross platform. They will be sent to all registered devices running mobile operating systems supported by MCS. While some cross-platform specific code is required, most of the code you will write to support notifications will be shared. 
If you are an experienced Xamarin developer, you probably also realized how much the push notification plugin simplifies development. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.